Hello and welcome back to the channel. All right, so this is going to be my 10 top Unreal Engine key shortcut. All right, so uh, let's get started, right? So the first one is fairly easy. This one is V to snap to vertex. Even though it seems a little bit easy, it's not that easy and not that useful when you are dealing with, you know, a couple of million vertices in your scene and you're going to see right away if i select this cube and i hold down v and i start moving it around unreal will suggest like these many vertex to start snapping which is you know no that good so the first thing that i would do is you know um if i'm working with this v i'm usually use doing some sort of you know blocking phase or um um white boxing right and the first thing that i would do is to get you know my white box and i will set the pivot of this uh, cube in a particular way right so let's go about it so if i hold down alt and i middle click drag i can move the pivot of this box and if i combine it with v now i can do this and then i can do that and then i can finally do that so this is a very good you know place for a pivot and then let me show you why uh, so what i'm going to do is right click on the cube and i'm going pivot and i'm going to set as, as pivot offset this will keep this pivot right there even if i select out and then select in uh, which is very very useful because now this is in the perfect position to start doing maybe like a wall right so I can take this, give it, you know, some sort of um, wide and length. And once I have that pivot there, I can uh, duplicate, right? And I can now hold down V and now I can snap one wall to the other and they're going to be perfectly snapped. So that's why this is perfectly useful when you are doing things, you know, this easy. But when you are dealing again, you know, with, already a couple of hundreds or millions of verdicts you know these might not be um particularly particularly useful right the other thing is that these will not snap vertex to vertex it's always pivot to vertex so that's why you know it's very good to prior priority of making use of it um actually moving the pivot to a sensible you know position like this one right Cool, that was number one. And in no particular order, let's go to number two. So, and control and alt. So, you might know by now that if you have um, any type of mesh and you want it to snap to the floor or snap to the surface, you know, of another mesh, all you need to do is to um, um, use your end key, right? And that should do exactly that so end and that will happen every time right but you can also vary it with uh control and alt so control uh, will snap not to a particular surface but to the actual uh, grid of unreal right so um if you move something and you have these many decimals behind you know each and every one of these if you hold control and then end that is going to snap you know to the next uh grid point maybe so you you can see that you know if this has you know that many decimals on it uh if i you know control uh, it jumped from 16 to 20 so it will jump to some sort of grid you know invisible grid but the cool thing is now uh this is going to be you know uh, absolute right and it's very good to not have, you know, that many decimals in, you know, in the transform of a cube. The other is alt, and that means that um, it will do the actual snapping to a surface, but not from the actual collision, like the normal end, but to a pivot collision like this, right? So now the pivot is the one that is going to, you know, have the actual uh, collision with the next uh, surface, right? So that was pretty easy. Now, number three, translucent selection. This one is very, very, very good. So um, 
many times you try to select something that is beneath a translucent actor and you cannot, right? And you might not even notice that that thing is there and you cannot select and this is driving you crazy, right? Uh, well, the only thing that you need to do is to type T as in translucent. And now you're going to be able to select through translucent actors. And now if you want to return to select translucent actors, you type T again. And now you are going to be able to select translucent actor. Pretty, pretty straightforward. This is pretty easy. Um, so let's jump to number four. So number four is not that intuitive. It is the G key, right? So the G key uh, is the one that is responsible of hiding uh, various game uh, widgets, right? And and um, UI, right? From many different actors. Like for example, in the particle, it will hide, you know, all those things. But if you sometimes select something, right? Like for example, these bushes right here, and you want to do some sort of operation on them, like maybe move them around. And, you know, because it's very complex with the outline, with the yellow outline, it might get hard, right? So you want to select things and actors in your scene, but you don't want to have that yellow outline. Well, if you type G once, that will take care of the actual um, um, GUI, right? And also, it will take care of the outline. So now, you know, I don't have a, um, the game elements, but I still have the outline. Well, if I type G one time, the second time, that will take care of the outline. And now you can, you know, use your uh, the transform on your edit, right? And move it around and do, you know, whatever you want without having that pesky uh, outline on it. And I always use this one because, yeah, for very detailed stuff, the yellow outline can be very, very distracting. And sometimes you want to not, for it not to be there, right? So that's it. That is uh, G game twice, right? Let's go to number five. H and control H. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you want to go around, you know, hiding stuff because, you know, it is on the way and you want to work, right, on things behind those things. But at some point you want all those things that you just hide to be back. So you simply go control H and they're going to be right there. So don't be afraid, you know, to start, you know, grabbing everything around and hiding it because you can get them back fairly easy, not by searching them on your lengthy outliner, but but by just simply control H and now everything is going to be back as it was, which is, you know, pretty handy. Uh, number six, marquee select. So no, not everybody knows that, you know, apart from selecting stuff by left clicking on them, you can also do a marquee select, right? You're going to be able to do that by holding down Control and Alt and then drag. That will draw a marquee on your viewport and everything, you know, inside that marquee is going to be selected. It's very, very useful, right? If I want to, you know, select all those boxes in one go and I believe the actual wall is also selected. So I can now Control click on the wall to deselect it. Now I will just be moving those boxes. So this is pretty, pretty good. Remember, Control, Alt, and drag is the select marquee. Number seven, camera bookmarks. So all, you know, through all, throughout this whole video, I have been using different bookmarks that I have left behind to, you know, to travel around my level. So this is something that you should do if you have a fairly big level and you want to be moving like in a snap, you can use the combination of control and the different numeral keys, like from one to zero, like one, two, three, four, five. For example, if I want these to be seven, I can control seven and now I can go to six or anywhere, anywhere in my world. And if I go now and click just seven, that will take me exactly um, you know, where I just set up that bookmark. Now, but that is not all. You can also use things as like empties, right? If you, uh, for example, um, let me go back here and select these to be my seven again, right? Like this. Um, if I want this 
uh, view right here to be safe or, you know, somewhere around it to be safe, you can simply go to my quickly add to the project button and you can go basic actor and you drop an actor right there and you call it point of interest or something, right? And you give it an, a numeral to it and you put it somewhere around there. No matter where you go, I can go back maybe to my point of view A and this is the one. I can go to that one that I just created and it's this one, but it could also, you know, be anywhere in my world, just like this. Now I'm on a secret place in this level, right? And a dungeon. And I can go back now to here just by double clicking on the actual empty. These empties are pretty secure because they won't render. Um, so you can have as much as, you know, as you want of them. Um, be sure to name them because if you start getting many of those, you might not know where they are going to take you. Maybe to a dungeon, right? Now, number eight, Control B and Control E. This one I use the most. These ones are uh, the moment that I discover that when you select something and you hit uh, Control E, it will edit it, right? It will open whatever editor inside Unreal Engine, you know, that is there to edit that stuff. Uh, that's it. Now this this one is a um, static mesh, so it will use the it will open the static mesh editor, right? This one right here is a blueprint, and if I go Control E, that will open up the actual blueprint like that, right? And um, this one is a uh, um, instance level actor, and this one if I Control E it will take me into that level so I can do any sort of editing, right? Maybe this, I will move this a little bit there and that a little bit over there, right? And once I'm done, I can hit escape, escape, and I can save. And now I have my um, instance level edit just by clicking Control E to get in, escape, to get out, right? Uh, the other one is Control B. So this one is also pretty useful because it will take you, you know, it will do like a browse of where that particular actor is inside your content browser, right? Which is very, very amazing because it, it will not only work this way, but sometimes, you know, you want to do some sort of um, filtering, right? For example, from Blueprint classes. And now that you find what you were looking for. Now you can click on it and then hit Control B and then it, it's going to remove the actual filtering and take you exactly where it is on the path, which is amazing, right? And we are almost at the end. Number nine, Control R for real time. This thing is like, a, I call it the fire extinguisher. I work with a laptop and having real calculate every single frame, even though I'm not using the machine, to me, it's like a waste. And, you know, it's hard in my hand because the keyboard is, you know, very, very hot. And it's like my hand is like a steak on a grill. Um, so I, I constantly simply hit Control R. And that means that now Unreal won't be calculating each and every frame, but it, it's going to like pause the, the scene and that will in turn, you know, make your um, CPU cycles less and your GPU cycles, you know, a little bit, uh, not completely, you know, um, um, free, but at least it's going to be a lot less. So you're going to say, be saving your hand from burning and your account bill, right? Your bill account is going to be a lot, your electricity bill is going to be a lot, um, you know, less, exp uh, more expensive, less expensive, all right? And yeah, the thing is that if you have th something that should be moving, like LODs and stuff like that, you might want to refresh it. So if you move around, that will, you know, refresh the actual real time. And as soon as you stay, you know, put for a, for a couple of seconds, then the real time will set to be off, right? So that's a way to use it. And if you want it on because you're working on some sort of, I don't know, animation or you want to see the real time, you simply hit control R, but it's good to have it off because it's not required really. And if you're working on a very large scene that may, you know, crash, you know, having it 
not calculate everything at once will save you a lot of crashes also. All right. Now to the last one, um, number 10, control shift T. This is not really the only uh, shortcut that I use in this sense, but it enticed a bunch of things that I do to save a lot of real estate of my viewport. If you go control shift T, it will only take, you know, that top um, tools that you have up there. And you can see right here where I, where I took that from show toolbar, right? I can, you know, take away that toolbar, but that's just a little tad of what I usually do on, on my Unreal. So I love to save every inch of space, you know, that I have, that I can. So for example, these viewports, I will also love for them to be less. I can save a bunch of pixels up here so I can right click and hide those tabs. I can have the tab that say that this is my outliner. I know that is my outliner. Uh, closing the details, closing this uh, console variable, you save a bunch of space, you know, this way. Um, and this thing down here um, that will tell me like in what level I'm working, I don't find it, you know, pretty useful. So I love to get it away so I can go to the advanced settings and I can search for context. And this one right here, show actor content editor, um, editor context. I can turn it off. Now it's not going to be there anymore, or at least it's going to be um, a little bit smaller, which is great. This is what I want, you know, everything as big, as huge, you know, my viewport. And I go to the length of, um, you know, if you type F11, you will have like um, cinematic view, you know, without any windows, just a viewport. Well, I have it in control space because to me is uh, very useful, right? I don't have to go all the way there to F11 uh, because I have control space to do, um, to open up the content drawer and shift space to, you know, save a little bit of time uh, of space, right? So if I'm working on, you know, white boxing, I have my whole thing very clean, nothing to bother me. And I can, you know, keep on working. If I need something, I can simply come here, select something, edit something in my um, um, editor window. And yeah, that's it. So that was it. We got to the end. All right. I want to invite you all to subscribe to the channel for more tips like this. I'm bound to do something more, not in the realms of um, keys, but, you know, main practices that I use inside um, Unreal. So be sure to subscribe for that one and uh, be cool. I love you all and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.